this week's episode of All Out was a very emotional one. One that I did not expect to happen at all. But I'm glad it did. And it was also the episode that gave us further information on our favorite coach, Coach Komori. And as well as it focused on Sekizan and a character by the name of Keita. Now this episode is titled X Day. And I'll further explain that as I go into the review. So I cried in this episode in particular moments. Um, I'm going to start with Coach Komori. Now this episode starts off with him meeting up with an old college rugby player friend by the name by the nickname of Yuchan. And they're catching up, you know, talking about their days in college when they used to play rugby. And the fact both of them teaches high school students in the rugby field. Of course, Yuchan has more experience than um, Coach Komori because he taught from elementary all the way up to college students. So he knows his way around when teaching people far younger than him. And we saw a side of Coach Komori that we don't usually see whenever he, when the, when he's training um, the boys to get better at rugby. Usually we see him very static or very stern, very strict. And on some rare occasions, he, you know, has a smirk and everything. Sometimes because he's amused by what the boys do. And sometimes he, you know, he likes how they act. But we saw a very relaxed, you know, laid back. Um, Coach Komori, something that we never really seen before, and it was very, it was very nice to see that side of him, and just seeing him and his old friend talking while they're in the restaurant, um, also with another friend of theirs that's actually younger than by two years, who was on the rugby team in their college years, you just felt like it was a very sentimental moment right there because it's like two old friends, and it felt like you were part of that that little small group because it felt like. You grew with them throughout the years, and now they're at this point in their lives where they're t they're teaching a bunch of kids how to play a sport, a particular sport, which is rugby. Um, we actually found some information about Coach Komori, which I found to be very interesting, but also at the same time, very sad. And I can see why he feels an attachment to the Jinko boys. Now, there was a point of his life where you know he they they said in this episode he is married and we knew he was married already and they showed a flashback where coach Komori wanted to have a child he's married to his wife and he wanted to have a child and it came to find out that his wife was unable to give birth and you know he had his ups and downs he was someone that always worried whether he was able to play well when he was playing rugby back in his younger days and then you know later on when you know he's out when he retired from playing rugby or such and you know he wanted to start a family of his own but unable to you know you can see why he, he most of the times he has this scary face but of course he has matured and you know Possibly may not have gotten over it completely, but he has learned to cope with that situation. And then when you think about that and see how he is with the Jingo boys, you see the connection there because, yes, he is stern. He is very strict with them. And basically, he's, he's trying to teach them the fundamentals of rugby. He's teaching them the basic work, the groundwork, so they can get to a certain point where they need to be. And even though he acts like that, it's because he genuinely cares for them like they were his own he even says that he, he feels like they are his own children and it was very sweet to see him say something like that he praises them while also you know giving them constructive criticism on where they need to fix things like how an actual parent would do so it was very nice seeing these two friends catch up and we have we even have where his friend Yu Chan explained that he has to prepare himself because X day will be coming before summer break um the way I'm seeing it is that during the summer break, there will be practice matches which they will have, which will, they will be going against various schools who all play rugby, you know, in the rugby region. So before that happens, there is X Day. And we come to find out X Day is particularly a day where some students may quit whatever clubs they are in because possibly they, they, they may not find an interest or you know they can't keep up with you know the activities in the in the um 
the club or whatever it can be. So we come to find out Keita, who I think a lot of viewers don't really care for him, but possibly this episode may change your mind about him. I don't know. Um, but this character in particular has been on the rugby team. He is a first year, and he actually sent in his resignation, uh, his, his, basically he quitted the team. And we come to find out the reason why he did that. And that the news was told to Sekizan, who runs all the way to try to convince, um, Keita to not quit the team and to come join back. And the reason why he quit the team is actually because of two things. One, it's also because of the influence of his parents telling him to quit the team. And two, it's because he's unable to eat. Now, many may understand reason one, but reason two, possibly a lot of you may say, why are you quitting the team? Because you haven't been able to eat. What type of foolishness is that? Well, because now that they have Coach Kamori um, teaching them, everything about rugby from the very basics to the most hardest part um Keita is unable to keep up with the practice with the training his body has been sore and he has been so tired that every time he tries to consume food he ends up throwing up he's unable to eat or do any of that stuff without feeling like he's going to be sick and he's unable to handle that anymore for the three months that He's been on the team, meaning that the series has, right now, we're currently three months into the show in their time setting. So, from the first episode to now, he's unable to keep up with all of that. And he's like, you know, I can't take it anymore. And you can't blame him for that. Like, if I'm unable to eat, if practice is so hard to the point where now I'm throwing up my food, if I'm being physically sick, you know, I may end up quitting the team too, which is actually very realistic. And, you know, Sekizan is saying, you know, practice is hard with me too, which he expresses. We would have thought he never would have said that because of how enthusiastic he is about practice each day. But actually, he says himself that practice is hard, but he still pushes through. But not everyone is like Sekizan, Sekizan who's able to push through through such strict regimen training. And we have characters like Keita who's like, you know, I physically and possibly emotionally, I, I'm not able to keep up and I can't do anymore. So it was very hard for Sekizan, a very hard pill for Sekizan to swallow hearing that news. Because remember, Sekizan has been on the team for three years. And in those three years, he had to deal with people that did not care for the game. He had to deal with not having a coach till now. He has to teach everything by himself, so he was playing the he was acting the position of both captain and as coach for two years till now. So Sekizan has been carrying a burden for quite a while, and you know to see something like this has has really shocked him to the core. And he doesn't want that to happen because he wants to bring everyone to victory. So you really felt for Sekizan in this episode. But he did ask Keita to promise him to see him and the team make it to Hanazono. And of course Keita agrees. But this doesn't end right here. We see where Sekizan is taking out his frustrations on the team. Saying that you're not you're not trying hard enough. You're not pushing. Your, your position is bad. And you're acting reckless but the one who's acting the most reckless is Sekizan now of course coach Komori does console Sekizan because he was like you know you were acting pretty reckless in practice today even though you were yelling at Gion earlier and Sekizan expresses how he was feeling at that moment and that was like a tearjerker moment as well the, the moment where he was talking to Keita and also this moment when he was talking to coach Komori was a tearjerker because it's like you know, he's telling, you know, for the three years I've been here, the second years and first years are lucky because now they have someone to show them the ropes. For the three years I've been here, all I've been doing is acting reckless. I had no one to teach me and I, re and I didn't have the power enough, even though now finally I have someone that can teach me everything I wanted to know since the day I stepped foot onto this field, since the day I signed up to be on this team. And I still wasn't strong enough to not let one of the members go. You truly felt for Sekizan. And you see him about to burst into tears. And that's like, oh my god, you would have thought this guy, big buff Sekizan. Strong Sekizan is about to break down into tears because he feels like he's not good enough. 
He's not good enough for his teammates. He's not a good enough leader that can lead them to victory. And you just really fell for him. And Coach Kamori, God bless his soul, best coach there is in a sports anime, tells him, I like your recklessness. Don't change yourself. And it's because of who you are. And from back then to now, that's why you have a team. Basically paraphrasing what he says and you you shouldn't change yourself for anything else because look what you have and continue being reckless because that's who you are and with that you may have lost before but next time you will win and it ends off with him being consoled you know everybody all the third years and possibly second years are you know Trying to cheer up Seki's on. But the episode also leaves off with a very dire scene where Hachioji is looking at his phone and it's another character who left him a text message. So I'm assuming next week's episode of All Out is going to be another emotional roller coaster, something I, I do not expect in most sports anime, back to back at least. So. I don't think I'm prepared for next week's episode, but I'm definitely going to have to watch it to see what's going to go down. Um, if you guys saw this week's episode of All Out, I know this was pretty lengthy video for, you know, an All Out video, which I usually review. But this episode was the realism in this episode and the fact that, like, they went outside of the actual sport and explored some characters. The fact that we got information on Coach Kamori and just the realism of people joining sports and quitting and, you know, how much that can affect people on the actual team. I really liked how they were able to explain that in this week's episode. So I'm going to try to prepare myself for next week because from what I understand, manga readers are saying that next week's episode is going to be very emotional. So I'm preparing myself for that. But this was a very good episode. This week's episode was amazing. So... If you guys saw this week's episode of All Out, episode 14, do drop a comment down below on how you felt about um, today's episode. The links are in the description box. As always, you guys go check that out and tell me how you felt about it. What are you expecting for next week's episode as well? And I'm Kimmy Chandler of Anime Legends Podcast, and I will see you guys later. Bye!